How's it going guys? My name is Alex. What do you mean? And welcome to a very special video with a very special guest. Uh, this is Barry from uh, eFootball Universe. He's been playing past eFootball games for about uh, over a dozen years, I think. And he's been filming videos for just as long. And if there is one person that I would be trusting with training players, that would be him. And uh, today we'll be talking about train guides. And uh, welcome, um, Barry. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I mean, that's a, that's a nice introduction. I mean, you're making me feel old, though, saying I've been playing for... It depends when you started, though. I remember I've been playing PES games in school, and that was like PES 2007. When great feature when you could have scored a goal, celebrate the goal, and then the referee was showing an offside decision. <laughs> and that was like so, so unique. And now you have that in FIFA as well. But back in the day, that was a very, very cool game. Today, we'll be talking about the training of the players. And that's a very requested topic. We'll be covering every position from goalkeeper to a striker. <laughs> Very popular choice right now is Gianluigi Donnarumma, who has been featured yeah. in the Fans Choice Pack. So I know that you made a few guides as well. So people who are watching this video, they want like a specific player trained. Barry has a video on pretty much every new player that has been released <laughs> in the past like few years. So all of them are relevant. You can go and check them out. But today we'll be talking about position rather than like uh, certain players. But we will be, of course, covering certain players so that people understand what you're talking about. So Donnarumma, he's really tall, and uh, if you're trained, I'll t I'll allocate the points on him. Do we really yeah. need that on Donnarumma, or should we be redistributing the points elsewhere? I think the best thing, like Donnarumma, first of all, right, I think is the best goalkeeper. I know a lot of people will talk about Courtois, and they'll talk about a couple of, like, the legend goalkeepers, um, but I think Donnarumma is right up there uh, because of his size, as you said, uh, Alex. I mean... Physically, you're not really going to get the physical contact coming into it. I don't think it's more about the goalkeeper reflexes, right? So if you take a look, we have the fans' choice young star Donnarumma up at the moment, who's a very popular card. We did have the Italian pack, which was probably the best card they ever released, but that's probably going to be gone now with the contract situation and stuff, unless you give him a contract and then you have to give him another contract. So this young star is Donnarumma, 20 levels. His goalkeeper reflexes is already at 84. But I mean, you pop a few into that and you're going to get that, you know, into the 92 zone because of the size of him, right? We don't need to focus too much on jump. Um, usually the smaller base goalkeepers like uh, Cassius or Kaylor Navas or any of those guys, they kind of need jump. You know, it kind of makes sense because they're not as tall uh, to get across the goals. Um, but Donnarumma, I think you pop in, you know, get his goalkeeper sta uh, reflex stats to 92 and then you can pretty much get his awareness. I think the two key stats now for the goalkeepers are awareness and reflexes. Um, because no matter what, Alex, you're going to concede goals anyway. Do you know what I mean? It's not like the goalkeeper is going to be at fault for a lot of the goals that you're going to concede. Because just the way that the game is, it's very easy to finish chances in it. Even with players that aren't that highly rated in front of goal, you know. Um, so that's kind of how we've maxed him out is like with a 92 reflexes. And we're pretty much going to be dependent on just his pure size and his ability to just re react to balls when they're coming at him from all angles. And what I found from playing the game, like since like it launched with the beta and training up players when they brought in that feature, um, I think reflexes is, is probably the best stat if you're just looking for pure skill. Because if you put it in the corner, no keeper is going to save it anyway. It doesn't matter what his stats are. But yep. I just think with Donnarumma, because he's such a powerhouse in front of, you know, under high balls, he's so big. Courtois is equally as good. Um, I just think the problem with Courtois is the fact that he doesn't have the low punt uh, kick out. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. not a huge issue. It's not a massive issue. Um, but I just feel like that Donnarumma is, is probably better. But it is kind of a personal choice. So we have yeah. a few popular picks. So let's start with uh, Delict. He has great defensive abilities. And if you auto-allocate the points... You're getting an overpowered on paper card, 98 rated overall with the playstyle boost. Um, but his speed and acceleration is lacking. And uh, if you're going to like one, two passes uh, in front of him and like a player is running behind, running down in the channels, like or there's a pass in the channel, the Ligt will be having trouble catching up with those players. So uh, yeah. is there any adjustments uh, to be made to the base auto allocating progression to the Ligt, for instance? Yeah, well, this this is a good player to train if you're looking, as you rightly said, Alex, if you're just looking for a defensive monster in the back. Like, you're not... I see a lot of people make mistakes that they try and get a player, and whoever he is, and they try train him to be the complete player. 
So for Delict, I see a lot of people and they're like, oh, you know, he's he's a bit slow. I need his acceleration up a little bit. I want to get him to like 75 acceleration. And they kind of overcompensate with the dexterity or they overcompensate with the lower body strength to get his speed and acceleration up. And then, yes, they still have a beastly defender, but you're kind of, I think you're kind of taking the legs out from underneath these players if you try to turn yeah. them into something that they're not. Like, yeah, yeah. it's kind of self-explanatory, right? But if you want a fast center back, buy a fast center back and make him faster. If you want somebody that's, you know, an absolute beast under the high ball, buy somebody and train up his jump. Make sure he has the right player skills. Make sure he's physically strong. He's still only like a 95 overall player with this build that I have here. So it's five into dexterity, one into lower body, five, uh, three into aerial strength, and then 13 into defending. But like okay. you have everything that you could possibly want with this card. Um, it depends the formation then as well, as you said. Oh yeah. The Ligt isn't going to be able to catch the likes of Mbappe and that on paper. But with the way the game plays at the moment, you don't need to worry too much about acceleration if the defender has got like really good awareness and engagement, which the Ligt has. And then you look at the player skills. I mean, he's got pretty much every player skill that you could want for a defender. This guy is probably going to make up part of a back three i would say where he's in the center oh yeah and then yeah. you have a fast mobile left back left center back and a fast mobile right center back that can do it all trust me with the way the game plays at the moment you won't get caught for acceleration and speed too much with the licked he just seems to have that knack of being in the right place at the right time there's another uh, powerhouse and uh, that is rudiger he is much more aggressive because he's a destroyer naturally and they get uh, aggression very base aggression yeah. very very high numbers yep. How do you use them? How do you train this type of players? Destroyers. And do you really like this playstyle? How many destroyers can you have uh, in your like back line? Like, can you have like three destroyers at the same time? <laughs> yeah, you could. You could. I mean, destroyers are probably the best playstyle, I would say, if you're playing quick counter or if you're playing long ball counter. Um, because it's so aggressive. Like your your AI, when you're controlling one player, the AI is all automatically kind of like zoned in with the aggress with the aggression when you've trained up like this rudiger that we're looking at the only thing missing with him is blocker as a player skill but everything else is you know perfect but it is that aggression like you can see the difference here right and i'll show it up with a little comparison is it is um, it blocker skill helps you uh when the players like pulling their legs and they're missing the ball is like blocker skill making that more effective because hey face that all the yeah. time Okay, yeah, gotcha. it basically it's the it's the block passing lanes so the players yeah. when you come up against the player that has blocker um, if you're playing it, the player kind of passes towards your center back. And that's done by, yeah, it's not like something that yeah. you're doing manually. It is and It is way too overpowered at the moment. Like, And the aggression is also uh, the uh, like the stat that is, AI is performing the aggression. It's like, you're not controlling a player and yeah. how aggressive he's going to be trying to tackle a player or close down on a player without yeah. you switching to, to, to the defender, right? Exactly, yeah. As you get better at the game, like no matter what platform you're playing on, you'll start to realize that a lot of the interceptions are based on animations like if you go look at the top top pro players and the players that are like top 50 100 in the world right yes they'll have a meta team yes they'll have like players with insane stats like Cannavaro, Tommy Asu they'll have the best of the best players right but the one thing that they do above all else that is better than the likes of me or you is going to be that they're able to read when the certain animations are kicking in and they'll oh, yeah. know right he's going to inter he's going to need to take an extra heavy touch on this and then boom he can just you know shift in call the pressure or whatever but rudiger like on his tra on his training right he's gonna have 96 aggression 90 awareness 90 tackling that's before any player form boost or anything because he does have unwavering form but on my destroyer center backs because i want them to effectively be buzzing around like a bee around the center back and putting serious pressure on the attackers I always like to have the acceleration around 75. I don't know, over 90 jump, 89 physical contact, um, 75 speed, 75 acceleration. So he is kind of the perfect pick the player, sit back a little bit and let the AI defend defender, if oh, yeah. that makes sense. Like he doesn't really need much input. Let's talk about Tim Yasukar. Like and a lot of people are sleeping on him and many people are recognizing that you can actually turn it right back into a center back. And there is a Kunda yeah. card that was released actually as a center back just recently in a fence choice pack. Like, why would I be playing right backs in a center back position? But apparently this is how Konami works. It's not real life. Uh, Tim Yasu is not even good at right back. He's not even starting for Arsenal there, uh, let alone yeah. playing as a centre back. I don't really even remember if Arteta played him as centre back uh, in a centre back role ever. Did they give this player's heading? 
they're giving these players aerial superiority. And if you train them properly, you can get an overpowered center back. So what is yeah. what is like this he's about? insane. Like Tommy Tommy Asu, right, is probably once you kind of get used to training players, you don't make the same mistakes again, right? So Tommy Asu is probably the most visual example of a card that on the surface it's like ah oh, he's not that good the overall rating doesn't take into consideration how good the card is overall right even though that contradicts itself it takes in to consideration and it's defined by how good the card is for his register position so this build of him here alex is dexterity lower body strength for each then aerial strength is eight defending 16 and goalkeeper one is six because his goalkeeper one stat is also very funny because yeah because it gives a boost it gives a boost to, to jump. Uh, jump yeah now you can you don't need to do that if you don't want to that's just something that you know it is kind of a little trick that it gives you two or three extra points <laughs> If you're looking to 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 use, points, is there like right? a is there like a threshold of stats for defenders that you're like, okay, that's enough. I'm stopping at ninety or stopping at eighty eight. Yeah, well, usually ninety, usually ninety is kind of where you'd go. But like, okay. I don't need, I don't need anything above, like like this card that I have here built up is is probably he's nearly got too many levels to go. Like he's a completely broken card in my opinion. His card is only rated as a ninety one right back. But he, him as oh, a yeah. centre back is a hundred overall. If you see there. My Tomias is like eighty nine rated card, but he's arguably my favorite defender in the game. So yeah, and people is like, wow, I have ninety eight delete whatnot, and the, my defenders are better. But like, it's not always the case. It depends on where you're yeah. playing these cards and how you're playing them. If you were to auto allocate this card, right, this Tommy Yasu card, they're not going to give the defending as high because they'll want to train up like lower bodied. If you're playing Tommy Yasu as a right back. It's you're, a completely different be, conversation, yeah. Yeah, it's a completely different setup, a completely different card. So I find what, what a lot of people do is they train the player based on, you know, they train the player based on at, like at shiny like numbers and getting them oh, yeah. as high as they can without actually realizing, oh, but I'm not going to be playing Tommy Yasu as a right back. I don't need dribbling at 75. I'm playing him yeah. as a center back. And if you're watching this video and it's not still September 2023, you can retrain the players as many times as you want for free. You don't need to pay any in-game currencies. And it's just like, if you if it doesn't fit your playstyle, if it's not a good center back for you, if you're not used to play... I mean, you should be trying him, though. Like, he's intercepting literally every ground pass. No, and I mean, Tommy Asu is insane. You don't need... Like, anyone could play with Tommy Asu, to be fair. And his base, <laughs> and his base card, uh, base stats in dribbling and passing is, like, good enough to distribute, to spray the balls to the right and to the left, lofted balls and... He's not really taking ages to trap the ball as well because he has good dribbling. It's like everything you want in Defender and more. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's why I'm using him. Well, let's talk about uh, the uh, fullbacks. Some people play fullbacks, right, uh, left backs, or some people play them in right, left midfielder positions in 3 2 3 2 and similar formations. Uh, what are the best positions? I think Can Cancelo is universal in like, yeah. all of these positions. And we can cover him and like maybe make a training guide for him and so people can understand what they want from these cards. I think lofted pass is what you need. And pinpoint crossings, mm -hmm. of course, would be very nice. If you're using a 3-5-2, you don't really need, you know, defensive stats. So, like, personally for me at the moment, I'm using, I think, Mar Marcus Lorente as my right mid. But I have a sub-tactic and I manually track back the wingers when I'm defending. So if I'm playing a 3-5-2, I'm defending as a 5, but I'm attacking as a, you know, like 6, basically. So I have 6 oh, yeah. players attacking... I'm defending as a five with my two out wide players. I mean, Cancelo is a fantastic player because he's got everything. I mean, especially this uh, Bayern Munich one that they brought out. This is an insane card because of the acceleration. You've also got the stamina, the speed, and the lofted pass. I think it's, yeah, it's 85 at the base, this card, even without, even without training him. So now there is another thing as well, Alex, that if you don't cross a lot of balls in, if you don't have a target man in the box, like a, you know, a collar or Lewandowski yeah. or Drogba, then... You are better off, I would say, having a player that is able to dribble more than passing. So that's something that you can still train up. But for me, there's two builds of him. So the first build we're going to show is exactly as you said. We're going to max out the lofted pass. We're going to put that to 90. I know okay. we can leave it at 88 and get the boost, but we'll actually put it to 90 because it's only five points. The dribbling, we're just going to leave it around 80, so two into that. And then we're just going to focus on him being able to compete with all the fast players in the game. So we'll go 90 on acceleration, which is 10 points, and then we'll go 85 on speed and stamina, or 86 on speed and 90 on stamina. 
And then you get to decide whether what type of player that you want. I would probably boost up his defense by six points and just train him and completely off that way. But if you're going to be using him barely to defend, like if you're using him as a wing back, that's not really going to defend, right? Then you can actually over, you know, um, overextend his acceleration or his stamina or whatever you want to whatever you want to use you can even do the passing if you want to go up that with one into dribbling Cancelo is all about getting on the ball having a really high engine and crossing balls into the box and when you don't have the ball he's going to get back and help you and then it just depends on on your train and how much defense you want on him how much attack you want on him that's a personal choice as to who you've got in your defense Let's talk about defensive midfielders, and you were pointing out that Ambrosini, that is available in free try, uh, very soon there'll be second yeah. free try for people who are completing the football festival challenge. The epic card from AC Milan, it's apparently yep. the most overpowered anchorman in the game, and there's a few good anchorman. I game. have him on my Xbox profile, I actually spun him and got him on my Xbox profile, and he's, like, I've had him for a while, but I got him again, the new version of him, the free one. Um, he's insane, but I think... There are a lot of anchormen that you can use, right? They have a very specific role uh, that they're gonna they're gonna have. Like Casemiro is there, Rodri, Fabinho, any of those will do a job for you. Your main role as a DMF uh, is as an anchorman is to get him back as kind of like a, an extra center back when you don't have the ball. Your anchorman DMF isn't doing that. I would definitely try somebody else. When it's set at normal, the yellow you get no stats. So what you see is what you get. The green arrow is plus one, sometimes plus two, and then the top arrow is a blue arrow. That's plus two, plus three. All of these players that we're talking about here, like the likes of Ambrosini, he's going to be an impact player for us that we're only going to play when his form arrow is up because he'll be super overpowered when his form arrow is fully up because we don't need to train up his defensive awareness um, higher than 88 because we'll get that boost up, right? Tackling is also going to get a boost to bring it past the 85 mark. And then you've got an anchorman, DMF, that still has, you know, when we train him up here, 75 low pass with 78 lofted pass, right? He's also got 75, 70 speed with 90 stamina, 75 acceleration. And then if we're going to be topping off this guy with a, with a really powerful card, right? We'll also pop in five into aerial strength and that will give us 88 jump. We'll top that up with the goalkeeper one stat to bring it to 92 jump. And then we still have like, three or four levels to go with dexterity if we want so it depends as i said on how you want to train this card but ambrosini is like perfect example of a card that is like completely broken across the stats that he has i would only be playing a player like ambrosini if he was fully up to get all those stats into the 90 zone but it just kind of shows you what you can do with a player if you have a little bit of knowledge about the game and the position that you want to play him we're not going to need Ambrosini to be breaking the lines with killer passes or touching goals like we would with Pedri or Modric or Messi or Neymar. It's all yeah. going to be about he's sitting in protecting the center backs. That's all he needs to do. Let's uh, talk about Goretzka then, a the box to box midfielder. There's a few good box to box yeah. midfielders. Like Chomini is good, yeah. I think. We're building Goretzka from the German till Brito yeah. back. This, this is a perfect example of playing players for their position, right? And I would definitely, for the player that Goretzka is, I would probably boost up his defending four points. I'd boost up his aerial str uh, strength for five points. Sorry. Yeah. And then we're going to go 80 on the speed, 82 stamina. We're going to go 75 on his acceleration, which is seven points into dexterity. And then once you're left with about 16 progression points, we're going to decide whether we want him to be a passing center midfielder or we want him to be kind of like bringing the ball forward dribbling. So that, again, depends on your play style. If you like possession and passing the ball, I would go with that. If you like quick counter, I would go with dribbling and boost it up. You're going to get similar levels in both of them. So I would probably go eight on the dribbling. If you're looking for quick counter, long ball counter, and you're very comfortable with just getting the ball out with the player's feet, moving it into the center forward as quick as you can, you don't need to set on the, the ball too much um, with that. You're just bringing the ball forward and touching goals. Uh, you can just boost that up whatever way you want. So eight into dribbling gives you 85 ball control. That means that when you pass the ball to Goretzka, he's literally going to just, the ball is just going to stick to him a little bit better, even as a box-to-box. -box. Because he does have one touch pass, but he is a bit clunky. He is a bit clunky compared to the likes of Pedri or Modric or someone like that, that you can also play a CMF. Yep. Um, and equally, if you don't like to dribble, like for me personally, I would probably just leave his dribbling at like 
78 ball control, 70 dribble, and 75 type possession, which is one into dribbling. And then I would probably boost up his passing to probably about 85 low pass. And then I would actually pop up his defend prop up his defending a bit as well. Um, because I know that I'm gonna spend most of my time defending with Goretzka as a box to box in the system that I'm playing. I'm going to depend on my AMF, my strikers, and my out-wide players to attack. But that's just how I personally play. If you're playing through the middle, you do need to kind of have a complete uh, central midfielder because it's the main spine of your attacks, especially if you're playing quick counter. Let's talk about the flair players and uh, that are usually played in attacking midfielder or like um, attacking-minded center midfielders like Pedri, for instance, who is apparently oh, yeah. one of the top five cards in the game. And I have his player of the week cards, but that, that you can't really train that. So may, maybe we choose another one. Yeah. Uh, do you one, have his although, whole player? Do you have the, his yeah, whole player version? Yeah, the whole player is like, yeah, yeah. he's making all the work for you. He's making the runs that you're not even asking for. And then suddenly yeah. you have so many players up front and you don't even play quick counter and he's making those runs. Like it's a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, but uh, <laughs> definitely not a lot of people got him, but many people have pulled him from the fans choice, cup packs. There have yeah. been many opportunities to open Barcelona themed packs. And of course, considering Konami is a partner of Barcelona, they're going to be pumping yeah. his cards in the future. So how do we train him? The only real difference is if you have the whole the whole player version of him, it is probably the best card. Like it's, I would say he's probably top five in the game. But otherwise, any version of Pedri, once you train him right, is probably top 10 in the game for standard cards. Um, let's have a look at the fans' choice, the Young Stars one, which is a phenomenal card as well. Like, I think the only thing you need to decide quickly with Pedri is where you're going to play him so he is down as a CMF similar to Tommy Yasu being down as a right midfielder I'm definitely going to play Pedri as an AMF though like he's going to be my main kind of attacker like linking everything together with my center forwards and my center midfielder so I'm going to be get, giving Pedri the ball as often as I possibly can through the middle because he, he does kind of play like a prime Iniesta like he's just so good at getting into the box so I go low pass 90 we don't need loft to pass on our amf too much because we're not going to be spraying the ball around as much as a winger or center midfielder dribbling that doesn't take much to go into the 90s i'm probably going to pop six into passing seven into dribbling 86 acceleration that's going to give us 78 offensive awareness and 92 balance i'll talk about that in a sec and then the rest i'm going to pop in and once i get to 78 speed and 90 stamina that's more than enough for uh an, an attacking midfielder and you still have a lot of points left over if you want to uh, kind of mess around with that. So you can max out his dribbling more. You can max out his dexterity. I mean, you can get his acceleration up to 89 if you want to, um, which I don't really think you need. But straight away there, you're going to have a card that can do absolutely everything. Every time I play him, he's insane. He's able to win the ball back, even though he's got no stats and he shouldn't be able to. He always pops up in the right place at the right time. If you are like long range shots, He's probably not the guy for you. You're better off go with like a guy that has good finishing and good skills, like long range shooting, long range curl, uh, yeah. knuckle shot maybe. Wingers have good dribbling stats, but their finishing is lacking. Like nowadays, there's only a few good wingers with good finishing. Mm. Like Vinicius has improved his finishing drastically in real yeah. life. Yeah. And uh, Rashford has also great at finishing. And his big time mm. card is actually reflecting that very well. It's a scary card, but not a lot of people got yeah. him. But most <laughs> wingers, featured wingers, have good dribbling stats, mediocre finishing, mediocre passing. Let's talk about yeah. maybe Dembele card uh, that is one of those like better versions of your regular winger that can dribble yeah. but can't finish. Uh, he's still decent. How do you go about uh, this type of cards? With my wingers, if I'm using out wide, he doesn't need to be a master of all trades. Like I just want him to be all about speed, quickness, agility, and dribbling. And yes, if I am cutting inside, you have a decision to make. Do you want to cut inside with your winger like Neymar, Dembele, and be able to finish? Or do you just want pure pace to spread the defense and keep your opponent defending out wide so that when you do pass the ball in, he's outnumbered in the box, right? So with Dembele, we're using the club selection eFootball uh, card from the Championship Pro. He's pretty easy to, to train up um, because we are going to be focusing a lot on his speed, his acceleration, all of them stats that, that are kind of good. But we're also going to be getting his uh, finishing up to about 75 as well, which does kind of change the card a little bit from other wingers that can go 90 in dribbling, balance and acceleration. So this is probably one of the only cards that I would make an exception to not have his balance in the 90 zone. 
because I'm going to be cutting in and, and finishing with him, similar to Neymar, right? For that exactly, I have like four wingers on my bench and everyone is trained differently and everyone is trained mm -hmm. to their strengths. So there are yeah. players who well, have... That's even, exactly how you should be doing it. Yeah, you, you, you exactly can try that. and boost the player's passing abilities, but then you realize that you're actually butchering the card and this player is exactly. not designed to pass the ball exactly at all. So yeah. for that, uh, you will just experiment and just like once you're reaching a certain threshold, every next point for passing will be so expensive that you're sacrificing so much points from other good stats that it's not exactly. worth it at all. So sometimes yeah, you, you see like if a player has base passing uh, that is higher than his finishing, then probably just like work on that and improve exactly. passing. Exactly. With Dembele here, Yes, you can get him to 75 finishing, but I agree with you. Like, he's got pinpoint crossing, he's got true passing, yeah. he's got double touch out wide. You can get the lofted pass up to 84. With the player form arrow boost, you can get that over 85, 86. That's going to unlock a couple of new animations when he is, tr like, throwing the ball into the box. And you've got your 92 dribbling, you've got your 90 acceleration. Maybe we can cover briefly Son Heung-min, who can play in a center forward position, and he's a deadly in that position too. So how would you be training him? Oh man, this card is absolutely insane. Like I, I wasn't going to spin for the Asia, Asia cards because my team yeah. is stacked. And I was like, I'm going to try to get this son because I saw a few people use him against me. And I was like, he just seems to be different, man. He moves different. And yeah. I, I was playing, I was playing a match last night in co-op and the stuff he was doing was just insane. Um, so I do, I am kind of afraid that they'll kind of like nerf him down again. Um, but yeah, this is another example of playing a player that is, you know, he has, he's set up as a left winger, but his best version of him is going to be central where you ignore the play style, you ignore his overall rating, you ignore his actual okay. register position and you're going to be playing him. Can you quickly say like, if you're ignoring play style, does the game punish you in any way? No, I don't think so, man. Realistically, I don't think so. I mean, the play style at the moment, I think is kind of more just a description of what okay, type of card they are. That's, that's, um, good. that's good. Yes, for anchorman, yes. And for whole player, yes. And I would also say box to box. You can very evidently see the play style. Um, I would say dummy runner and deep lion uh, forward as well. You can see it. But it's not going to mean that the card is unusable if you play oh, yeah. Sun as a prolific winger and you play him as a center forward. Oh, yeah, that's so, good. I mean, the thing with Sun is, right, very quickly you can see why he's so overpowered because, again, we'll go back to that 88 stat that we talked about with the player form arrow. So yep. if you have the luxury of using Sun as a player that you only play when his form arrow is up, you can pretty much get a card that has everything perfect. Like, And I mean everything perfect um, when you're training him up. You're going to get all the 88s. You're going to get like insane dribbling, insane passing, insane everything. Early, he's not going to be good. Like, you're not going to be using him as a target man. And also, passing, you're not going to be really passing. This is basically a running gun type striker, like Mbappe, Romario. This is basically pass the ball to me and run. That's basically what it is. The only thing I would really max out is his dexterity because you have to get the offensive awareness up to kind of override the play style a little bit that he is going to just stay up centrally as much as he possibly can. But this is a 96 version of him. So we've popped nine into shooting, 10 into dribbling and dexterity, four into lower body, and then one into aerial strength just to get that overall rating up. doesn't really make a difference. But you're going to have with this version of him, Alex, you're going to have 88 offensive awareness, dribbling, finishing, curl is going to be 89, speed is going to be 88, and acceleration is going to be 94. So when you get the form arrow, all of those stats I just called out there are going to be into 90, over 90. Insane as a center forward. Like outperforms Mbappe, outperforms pretty much all the epics as well. This version of... Speaking of uh, Mbappe, a lot of people have gotten his French national team card. I think it was a free one. Mm -hmm. It is a goal poacher. It's a free one, yeah. Center forward. How would you be training this card? Because like it's really tricky. Sometimes people are messing up these cards and like I have a lot of people saying that Mbappe doesn't work for them. I personally have him uh, sitting on the bench with the super sub skill applied. So yeah. I'm doing that. Okay, that's, well, that's one nice. of the ways <laughs> way to do that. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think he's, he's very similar to Son. Like he, he kind of has that 88 dribbling, 88 finishing. I think the problem that people make with Mbappe, for whatever reason, I found as well, I've never been able to use Mbappe. He just does not do it for me. Like, his stats might say 90, but when I'm playing with him, it feels like he's like 81, 82 in certain stats, right? Oh, yeah. And I actually think the reason for it is the dribbling, the ball control. I think, like, with the tight possession on this card, 
people kind of ignore it. I would probably boost him up and put nine into shooting, nine into dribbling, and two into dexterity. And that was kind of where I'd go with the card. I wouldn't train his acceleration over 90. So I would always overcompensate with this Mbappe to go 90 tight possession and ball control, 93 dribbling, and then 85 balance, 88 acceleration, 88 finishing. You're still going to get him, like as you said, Alex, like putting super sub on him is huge. Um, If you get him as a super sub, that is like going to be insane impact player off the bench. Yep. But he is a difficult player to play with. There's no doubt about it. I think Romario smokes him. Like every single game I play Romario, it's a goal. Yeah, but like, not everyone score a goal has, a game. Not everyone is so privileged to have Romario on their team. But let's talk about <laughs> Romario though. Like, yeah. How would you be training this card if you had the uh, luck to get his, I don't know, which one? The big time are we going to be covering that or epic there is like a yeah i would say i'd card. say they're pretty much the same i mean the big the epic one has has more player skills it's the number one card in the game it's the goat card for me it's the greatest card of that they've released if you're looking for a striker right obviously canavaro and Pirlo come into it as well um but he just trains up so beautifully man with the player skills Yes, you can throw a few extra on him if you want to, like one touch pass and stuff. But he's got double touch and soul control, which unlocks the the special double touch. The animation on the on the special double touch. Not only it is looking good, but it's actually effective. I think. No, it is. It is. It's harder. It definitely gives you an advantage. I mean, that's why a lot of the people, a lot of the top pros use players that have that oh, yeah. solely for yeah. that to get one chance in the game. Like we saw it a few times in oh, yeah. events and stuff where they'll just use that one one or two times and it'll result in a goal because they're just so used to the animation. But this Romario is very easy to train up. You've got your finishing at 88. You've got your dribbling at 88 with 91 ball control, 91 tight possession. And you still have 11 points left over that if you wanted to, you can pop up You know the balance to 88, 89 and still get acceleration with 92. Every stat that he has that you need is going to go over the 90 zone. If you put eight into lower body strength and shooting, 11 into dribbling and 9 into dexterity. I think people sleep on dribbling, especially since the last update. I definitely would be Im- improving the dribbling of most players. There's a lot of different types of strikers, but I mean, yeah. the ones that people are using oftentimes are the ones that are finishing the uh, uh, crosses, uh, lofted crosses into the box, very effective when you have someone to finish them. And a few of the players are uh, Holland, Drogba, and maybe your uh, blood color that you're using a lot in your team. And oh, color, yeah, my man. He's one of those, like, a target men, I would say, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, how would you be training these cards, considering they probably not supposed to be dribbling a lot? Even if you take a look at standard Haaland, right? You can oh, yeah. straight away see if you know nothing about the game. Standard Haaland, 26 levels to go. He does have first-time shot, long-range shooting, chip shot control, heading, fighting spirit he's got a load of random skills he's also got super sub right but you know the biggest problem no matter what you do if you max out his dexterity you can get his acceleration to 87 but your balance is only going to be 70 so i would like completely ignore that and just put his acceleration at 80 just to be able to get his offensive awareness up his dexterity 11 points dribbling once you get that to about 65 for tight possession and 75 for dribbling that's more than enough his finishing doesn't need to be higher than 88. His speed and stamina, I pop three into his lower body to get his speed up to 87. And then I'm going to boost up his like ability in the air. Because 99% of the time, if you are looking to make an impact with Haaland, it's going to be first-time shot. Whether that's an acrobatic finish, whether it's a long-range shot, whether it's a first-time shot, a stunning shot. Those things don't really depend on stats like they're more kind of contextual if that makes sense like it's the same way as i use collar collar is always just a button press finisher like as in i very rarely get the ball take a dribble touch and go get it back touch and go it's usually get the ball with collar hold it up knock it out wide or else knock it back to my amf cmf run out with collar and then i'm trying to get a cross in or else i'm trying to get a true ball and then he's shooting you know he might take one dribble and it's the same with Haaland. so I would definitely think that Haaland is more suited to kind of raising up his physical contact. The physical contact and the jump will override his balance, his lack of balance. Like the balance that definitely needs to be looked at because the likes of Haaland, the likes of Burkamp, the likes of those players, just because they're tall doesn't mean that they're, un- in, you know, that they don't have good balance in real life. So I think Konami have done that to actually balance the cards themselves to make them not too overpowered. A very instructive um, guide from Barry. And I've learned a lot myself. 
And uh, I am subscribed to Barry and so should be you. So make sure you're doing that. The links will be in the description. And of course, we're doing another video on Barry's channel. And uh, that is a tier list of the best players in the football that will be linked uh, in the description and in pinned comments. So make sure you're watching that right after you finish this one and uh, say hello that uh, you're coming from my channel as well. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much, Barry, and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. And if anyone has any questions or anything, I'm sure they can ask you and we can always do, you know, a follow up video or whatever. Oh, if yeah. anyone has any more details they want to know, especially with the gameplay changes coming. But uh, I think we should be yeah, doing man. another one in eFootball 2024 once released. Yeah, Gonna definitely, man. Hey, All right, man. Thanks for asking me. It was, it was good crack. Pleasure was all mine. Peace.